Now to an incredible success story. About a year ago, Justin Halpern was living with his parents and started tweeting some of his father's more colorful views on life. Named appropriately, bleep, my dad says. The success of that led to a best-selling book of the same name, and this fall it'll be a primetime sitcom on CBS starring William Shatner. Okay, uh, dishes are done. Uh, I've swept the floor, wiped down the table, so that looks nice, 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 nice. Um, oops, still need to disinfect Son, the... sit down. The house is clean enough. We didn't accidentally kill a hooker. We had dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Halpern, good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on your success. How excited are you? Uh, unbelievably so. I want to read a couple of um, quotes that made me laugh out loud that are real life quotes your father said. Here's a quote he said on last place finish in the 50 yard dash during Little League tryouts. Your dad said, quote, it kind of looked like you were being attacked by a bunch of bees or something. <laughs> then when I saw the fat kid with the watch, who was timing you start laughing, well, I just, I'll just say, it's never a good sign when a fat kid laughs at you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, that was, uh, yeah, I'm not the sl I'm not the fastest individual, and uh, he liked to remind me of that at times. So what was it like growing up with your dad saying these types of things to you or in general to the world? Did you think it was normal? You know what? Uh, I, I never really thought too much about it until I would like have to make apologies to friends here and there when they would be like mortified by some of the things he said. So when did you realize, all right, this is not normal. I need to apologize for my dad. What, what was what was the turning point? I think it was probably uh, shortly after that, maybe when I was 12, when he uh, he had it out with my entire little league team and stormed off. <laughs> Oh, you are kidding me. No, yeah, he quit halfway through the season. <laughs> so was it horrifying? Your, what was your childhood like then? I actually had a great, great childhood, but uh, I always knew like to be careful which situations I brought him into. Here's another example that made me laugh looking at the book. This is what he said to you when you had a bloody nose. What happened? Did somebody punch you in the face? The what? The air is dry? Do me a favor and tell people you got punched in the face. <laughs> what were you like growing up with a father like this? You know what? I, I, I was a pretty mild-mannered kid. I, I, uh, I think he, he took a lot of the excitement and uh, I kind of just floated along. <laughs> now, uh, when you decided to start tweeting about it, did you tell your dad you were tweeting all the funny things that he said? No, not at first. I, I was just living at home, so I was just writing down some of the crazier things he said, and, and it wasn't until I started getting a lot of attention that I thought I should tell him. And then what was his reaction? I thought he was going to be really mad, but instead he was just uh, wanted me to help him find his cell phone, and he was like over me. He, he didn't care. He was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. <laughs> and then when you decided to make it into a book, and it's on the New York Times bestsellers list, what was his reaction then? He was actually really, really uh, happy for me. He he's he doesn't have the internet in his house, so it's not something where he. Sees Why am I not surprised? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, so it's not like it's in front of his face all the time. Uh, and then, what's the reaction he's been getting from people like neighbors, friends, <laughs> you know, reading some of the ridiculous but hilarious things that he has said in his life? Uh, you know what, he doesn't get a lot of that, except that he gets like 50% off this pizza place he goes to every day, so he's pretty happy about <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> so you're a hero then. Yeah. So what's his reaction, what's your reaction to William Shatner playing him? Because I think, I've never met your dad, but Shatner is hysterical in this role. I yeah. feel like he is your dad. Mr. Shatner is the closest thing to my father that I've, I've ever met. He, he's fantastic. Did you have any say in the casting? Did you have, you know, uh, suggestions? Yeah, I had some suggestions. I, I sort of weighed in. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we were just so lucky to get him. And I understand your dad got to meet William Shatner? Yeah, he was at the pilot taping and they and everybody wanted them to take a picture together and so they both kind of walked up and it was like two older gentlemen that didn't really care about meeting the other person and so they, they come and they meet and he says hello and Mr. Shatner says hello and they take a picture and then they just walk away in opposite directions and that was it. Did everybody think it was hysterical except for William Shatner and your dad? Yeah, it was like it was it was like everyone laughing except for those two guys. Oh my goodness. So what happens from here on out? Uh, I know what's going on in the fall. What is your role? 
I'm a writer on the show, and uh, so yeah, we're just working hard in the writer's room trying to make it as funny and close to real life as possible. And that was your dream. You were the struggling writer living at home with your parents, and this happens. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it is absolutely a dream come true. Well, we cannot wait to watch it. Justin Halpern, thank you so much, and congratulations on all your success. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And to read an excerpt from Justin's book, go to our website, earlyshow.cbsnews.com. And Bleep, my dad says, premieres Thursdays this fall at 8.30, 7.30 Central, right here on CBS.